I wasn't quite expecting this. What's up, everybody? Welcome back to Taste Like Music. Jason and Joe here. And today we are going to review the new Margot Price record. It's called Strays. It's her fourth studio album. I loved the first two. Wasn't too high on the third one. The third one was called That's How Rumors Get Started. It was produced by Sturgill Simpson. It was kind of a, a pretty big departure from her first two, which were a lot more traditional country. Um, that one kind of leaned a little bit on like 70s Fleetwood Mac, I think was the big influence and wasn't crazy about it. And I haven't been crazy about the singles going into this one. I'm heading into it with pretty low expectations. So how about you? How Were you looking forward to this at all or... Well, I hadn't heard any of the singles. I eschewed, skewed listening to anything. I feel similar to how you do about, you know, Margot Price's career trajectory. Uh, her first two both made my top fives in their respective years. I didn't, I, I think I probably liked That's How Rumors Get Started a little bit more than you did. But I, I you know, it wasn't in my top 10 or 25. I don't think on the, I thought it was an okay record. It, Sounded a little bit too much like Sturgill Simpson and not enough like Margot. And so I, don't, I didn't really know what to think of this or expect from this. I didn't really have any you know, high hopes. I didn't think she was going to go back to her old, uh, you know, more Americana country revival kind of sound. But I wasn't quite expecting this. All right. So what? is this um this one was produced by jonathan wilson who is a producer that i usually like he's not like a, a guarantee like money in the bank type of producer like a, several others are for me but typically i enjoy his work uh you also have some guest appearances on this record from mike campbell from the heartbreakers you got lucius you got sharon van etten uh, apparently the, the whole like kind of story about this record is that she went up into the mountains and did some mushrooms and wrote a bunch of songs. So I guess they're trying to sell the uh, psychedelic angle on this one a bit, which is kind of there a little bit. I can hear it on certain tracks, but um, a lot of it feels more like, I, I would say like AM era Arctic Monkeys, which is like a carbon copy of Black Keys, which is like a carbon copy of the White Stripes. It's just like this like vaguely bluesy kind of pretty plain riffage with pretty uninteresting melodies for me. And that is especially the case on those singles. Change of Heart, really not a fan of that. I think that song is incredibly bland. What's the other one? The, the first one, I've Been to the Mountain. That one... The part where she kind of like starts freaking out a little and talking about people watching her and she kind of screams a little. That part of the song I think is kind of cool, but but the bed music track I think is very plain. Uh, so going into the record, that's what I was expecting. I was expecting it to be all of that sort of thing. I was not excited for it, but I think there's more than just that on this record. There are some songs on this record that, that I enjoy. The track Radio with Sharon Van, Van Etten is kind of cool and a little different. There's some synth and drum machine on that one. Country Road, probably my favorite track on the record. That is what I had hoped this record would be. Um, I think she's got an amazing band. I've seen her live several times. I think her band is one of the best bands around. And I don't think they've shi shined on her last record and... They don't shine much on this record, but on this track, I feel like they actually sound like themselves. Like if you go see a Margot Price show, this is what they sound like. They get some room to stretch out. There's some like great space in the arrangement. Guitar tones are great all over that one. Really cool track. Anytime You Call is a song written by Jeremy Ivey, her husband who is in her band. And that song's pretty cool. It has a little Beatlesque sort of thing going on, a little bit of brokenness. Uh, that's the track with Lucius on it as well. I think her voice still sounds great, really in good shape, but I think just melodically way less interesting than she was on her early work. So for me, this record's a mixed bag. I went in with admittedly low expectations and it exceeded that. So I think, you know, I was kind of happy with it because it was better than I expected. I'm going 3.5 on it. I think it's good, but there's just too many tracks that are a little, little bit boring, kind of duds like cluttering things up for it to, to get up to four stars for me yeah I, I feel much the same i think it starts off pretty bad with been to the mountain other than i like the screaming part because it's 
something different, forceful. Like she's she's really kind of uh, trying something new there. But the whole song, it's too long. It's five minutes and 30 seconds. And it's just kind of like cliche after cliche of just like, I'm this and I'm this and I'm this. And the music is really boring the entire time. Uh, Light Me Up. You know, I, I like Mike Campbell, but that song sounds like it's like four different songs like mashed together. There's just like weird parts that don't like really fit. There's just like little coda of guitar that has absolutely nothing to do with anything that's happened in like the first four minutes and 50 seconds. It just comes out of nowhere and it's just this little tag. But it's just, I thought it was a, a new song starting or something. It just doesn't feel cohesive in any way. Radio with Sharon Van Etten's fine. Um, but I don't know, it feels like a cliche as well a little bit. The only thing I have on is the radio kind of like that's that's been done so many times. And I don't know, I barely noticed Sharon Van Etten, so I'm not really sure why she even needed to be on that track. I do like Country Road. That one, you know, feels like what I want from Margo. And, you know, Margo can go and, and change and do everything she wants and develop her new sound. But I think that's the sound she does the best. I really like the piano. It's got a little, uh, you know, Joni Mitchell. It's got that 70s sound to it. And the rest of the album, you know, I was really disappointed in the production, especially, you know, uh, for the guy who did Misadventures of Doom Scroller last year, Big Time by Angel Olsen, playing the next 20th century by Father John Misty. And he also did Pure Comedy, I Love You, Honey Bear. So some pretty great albums. I don't know, the production on this sounds like a, like a, a wannabe 70s band's production. Like, it sounds like, you know blackberry smoke or something like one of these like revivalist sort of like 70s band and you expect more from like this outfit um so I, I was pretty surprised like it it sounds worse than it should for uh you know the level of talent on this album between the band and margot and jonathan wilson like that just does not live up to what i was hoping for at all and I don't know, I mean, the lyrics, I think, are, are worse than they have been. And the music itself is worse than it, it has been. So I'm, I'm probably at three stars. I was, you know, middle of the road expectations coming in. And I think they underperformed even those. Uh, although it does get better uh, towards the end of the album. Uh, Hell in the Heartland's pretty decent. Anytime you call is okay. Lydia's, um, you know, that feels more like a, a classic Margot Price with the lyrics about the you know abortion clinic and everything. And Landfill's pretty strong, but I don't know. It just doesn't feel cohesive as an album. And I don't know, maybe I just have higher expectations for, for Margot. Um, so, yeah, I was pretty disappointed and it went down even a little on a second listen. I, th I think the first time through, I probably would have had it three and a half. But once I really started like paying attention to how everything sounds and the lyrics, it dropped a, a half star. So I, I only can do three for this. And I don't know. I hope she doesn't continue on this path because it's you know, a land of uh, black keys and you know those sort of 70s wannabe bands that don't have like the color and the feel of like an actual 70s album so so it's a it's a tricky it's a dangerous uh road to tread i think yeah i that blackberry smoke call out is hitting the nail on the head that's exactly kind of what's happening here and i i would love for her to go back to doing the more traditional country stuff but i don't think she has to do that i think there's definitely ways out of that for her that are more interesting than this yeah this is just kind of a little safe actually very safe but still some good songs i don't want to sound too harsh on it there's definitely a good at least half of the record that i, I enjoyed a good bit i'm there with you the, the lyrics too especially on the first song she when she says i've been a waitress and now i'm a consumer just that one was especially clunky but uh yeah let, let us know if you've heard this record what you think of it uh drop your thoughts down in the comments make sure you hit the like button and subscribe to the channel if you've not yet done so uh, there's also a bunch of links in the video description that will take you to our website or Patreon or social media. So check those out. 
Thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next one.